What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another episode. In today's video, I wanted to go ahead and cover what I feel like are the best external SSDs that you guys can go ahead and pick up for 2021. Whether you need some external storage for your laptop, something you can encrypt and use to edit those larger video files off of, or if you're just looking to expand that storage on your next gen console, this video will cover the best external SSDs for any budget and any scenario out there. Now, one thing we can all agree on is file sizes keep getting larger and larger. And as tech advances, it's only gonna become more of an issue for those of you out there still cleaning the dust off of your older storage device. Whether you're editing 6K and 8K video footage or downloading those larger games for your next gen consoles, having something reliable and fast is a must for everyone's workflow in 2021. The SSDs we'll cover in today's video are my top picks for their speed, durability, and price to ensure you don't run into any hiccups in your workflow for many years to come. Now, if you're stuck on the fence between choosing an SSD or a portable hard drive, just always remember that SSDs have a ton of advantages for their price premiums. They're much faster, much smaller, they're way lighter, and less susceptible to damage while being much more efficient, which is why creators choose them over standard portable hard drives. And since they are designed for a mobile workflow, they are built a lot better, letting them survive falls, drops, and a ton of other scenarios you might encounter, unlike portable hard drives, which can fail on you the first time that you drop them. We're gonna kick off this list in order from the most budget-friendly SSDs with slower read and write speeds, and then make our way up to the much more expensive Thunderbolt 3 SSDs that sport those insane speeds. Now, before you jump the gun and go for the most expensive and fastest versions, you have to make sure your computer even supports these devices. For example, just because your laptop or your PC has a USB Type-C port does not mean that it's Thunderbolt capable and ready to handle those much faster speeds. So make sure you guys are keeping an eye out for stuff like this when you make your decision. Kicking off the list, we have the Seagate Barracuda starting off at $89.99 for the 5 500 gigabyte model with sizes expanding up to two terabytes. You get speeds of up to 540 megabits per second, helping you seamlessly connect to your PC, Mac, and next-gen console. Now, Seagate is offering a three-year warranty with this version, giving you peace of mind being able to back up and protect those files thanks to the Sync Plus software. In the box, you get a USB Type-C to C cable along with a USB Type-A to C cable. This is a fantastic option to start off with, and the only downside to this model that I can think of is the USB cable might not be long enough for some consumers out there. Now, don't worry. All of these will be linked down below for you guys with the cheapest prices as of January 15th, 2021. Next up, we do have a super familiar face, which has been a go-to for many creators over the years. This is Samsung's T5 portable SSD. It kicks off with storage sizes ranging from 250 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. The one terabyte was the smallest that I could find for right now, and its price starts off at 130 bucks for this beast, which does have optional password protection to go along with the multiple different connection options included in its package. It's also backwards compatible with USB 3.0 and 2.0 if your PC does not support a USB Type-C connection. It also sports these same read and write speeds coming in at 540 megabits per second while giving you a nice compact and lightweight feel. Kicking off into third gear, we have the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD, which is on deal right now for $160, $90 off of its original $250 price tag for this one terabyte model. It does offer a five year warranty. It has up to two meters of drop protection with read and write speeds of up to 1,000 megabits per second. Now, it is also IP55 water and dust resistant, giving you that peace of mind anywhere you take it. It lets you back up mobile content in a breeze while also offering you 256 bit password protection. The top also sports a handy loop to help easily secure this SSD to your belt or backpack for that extra peace of mind. Now SanDisk did mention that there aren't many pre-built PCs or laptops out there that do support USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 yet, so it is limited in terms of those higher speeds. Here's some tests that I ran with my M1 MacBook Pro that only gave me disk read and write speeds of just over 600 megabits per second, so make sure you guys keep that in mind when you are making your decision. Next up, we have the bigger brother of the Samsung T5. This is Samsung's latest T7 portable SSD. It starts off at 110 bucks for the 500 gigabyte model and goes up to $330 for the two terabyte variant, which is currently on sale from its original $400 price tag. It's compatible with USB 3.0 and 2.0, and it also has read and write speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second with an LED status indicator to let you know when it's in use. Aside from the shock resistance feature in its build, the main selling point of this newer model is the fingerprint scanner right on top that lets you easily access your files anywhere by simply setting them up through the management software. It's definitely not cheap, however, it is super fast, lightweight, and very secure to help somewhat justify its price point. For our fifth monster on the list, we have one of the best looking SSDs that I've ever seen that can also double as a weapon for protection if you are in a bind. 
This is Seagate's new Fire Cooler Gaming SSD. It's the one terabyte variant that comes in at 250 bucks and boasts read and write speeds of up to 2000 megabits per second. In the box, you get the USB type C cable and the quick start guide to go along with the Fire Cuda itself. Aside from its stealthy design, it does provide a five year warranty to go along with the fully customizable LEDs that you can go ahead and manage in the toolkit software. Now, it certainly feels like the heaviest SSD that I've ever held with a weight coming in at 143 grams. This is definitely the last thing you'd want to drop on your toes or any soft surface for that matter. For its speeds, this is as fast as it gets for a non Thunderbolt SSD when it is aligned properly. Like the T7 and the SanDisk SSD, this is all again dependent on if you have a USB 3.2, 2x2 supporting desktop or laptop to take full advantage of these much faster speeds. For all these tests, I have been using my M1 MacBook Pro, which does cap out a lot lower with its speed since it only supports USB 3.2. 3.1 Gen 2. Now I did have to go ahead and format it for my Mac after I used it on my PC, so make sure you guys take note of that when you first connect it to either one of these devices. Now I did go ahead and connect it to my studio PC down here where I do most of my editing, and the read and write speeds were a lot faster than my M1 MacBook Pro, so no issues there once it is aligned properly. And if you do want to go ahead and use USB 3.1 and you don't have USB 3.2, it still will give you read and write speeds of around 1000, so it's still super fast. Moving on to the legendary Samsung X5. This is by far the fastest portable SSD that's on the market right now and thanks to its Thunderbolt technology it boasts speeds of up to 2800 and 2300 megabits per second. Its build stems from magnesium alloy with dynamic thermal guard technology and a heat sink to help prevent throttling under those heavy workloads. It comes in 500 gigabyte, one terabyte and two terabyte variants that start at $219 and go all the way up to 550 bucks. Now it's much cheaper than when I first bought it. I remember the two terabyte version costing seven to eight hundred dollars when it first came out if you could find it. If you want speed above everything else and money is no object, then this is the SSD for you. It's not exactly compact or waterproof, but it does provide the most exceptional performance with hardware encryption to go along with it as one of its secondary features. The device is slightly heavier than the Fire Cuda coming in at 150 grams and only works with Thunderbolt 3 technology. So unless you have a USB Type-C port that clearly has a Lightning logo on it, it won't work. Now the Samsung X5 was the only SSD that I couldn't get to work with my PS5 for obvious reasons. The PS5 does not support Thunderbolt technology. It does have a USB type C port on the front to go along with those USB type A ports on the back, which aren't nearly fast enough. I think they only support up to 10 gigabits per second for speed. The other external hard drives, however, did work well for the most part. I did have some issues with the T5 and T7 initially. It said that I was having issues using the wrong cable or the device itself wasn't suitable. I did go ahead and connect to the USB type C port on the front of the PS5 and it let me format the drive that way for gaming and once I did that I didn't have any issues. So if you run into any of these problems make sure you try both USB type C and the USB type A ports on the front and back of your PS5. Also something else make sure you use the right cable. I mixed mine up in my testing and some of them didn't exactly help the SSDs get recognized properly. You obviously shouldn't have that issue since I'm assuming you're not testing out six different ones at the same time. It is worth noting that you may have to restart your PS5 if it's not picking up the SSD or letting you format it because of one of these reasons. Now I know this is information overload for some of you guys out here. I did do a ton of testing to help make sure this was an easy decision for you guys. For me personally, I love the Samsung X5 and it's not because of how it looks. I just need those faster transfer speeds for my 4K and 6K video files. Not to mention if I pick up an 8K camera in the future, I'll be covered as well. Behind that, I'm absolutely in love with this new Seagate Fire Cuda and its dope design. I will make sure to also incorporate this SSD into my daily workflow. For everyone else out here who doesn't need a crazy amount of speed, I feel like the Samsung T7 or T5 are the best picks, depending on whether or not you would like to pay that price premium to get that faster speed and the fingerprint reader that you get with the T7. I really hope this video helped you. If it did, please make sure you smash that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.